this Phillies team is unwatchable. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Phillies Nets of Media to Eric Happen. Last night's game between the Philly Phillies and the New York Mets is the Phillies lose 8-2 to two to the Mets as they drop the second game in the three-game series and now secure a series loss as they look to avoid the sweep tonight at 7 8 on Sunday Night Baseball. Now, guys, before getting into this video, please subscribe if you have not yet. Please show engagement bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. This video is also brought to you by All Things Phillies. All Things Phillies provides a daily video of highlights from the game. So please go and subscribe to his channel. Link in the description section. Uh, this Phillies team is just a joke, right? I mean, it's pretty much no secret. I mean, the Phillies base, what we've seen over the past two weeks, has really just been abysmal. Uh, so another series lost to New York Mets. I am tired of losing to this Mets team, which I understand is, you know, 31-17. and 17. I mean, they're uh, definitely in a good position right now. They've definitely been playing good baseball. Uh, but I am certainly tired of losing to this Mets team. Uh, you know, we just totally got outmatched last night. Zach Eflin allowing seven earned. And this is one thing that really, really bothers me about Zach Eflin, right? I mean, of course, I, I'm a huge Zach Eflin fan. I mean, he comes out, you know, strikes out 12. He was absolutely dominant. And then he comes back his very next turn and gets smacked with seven earned into six innings. Like, he's just so inconsistent. The inconsistencies are certainly a problem with Zach Eflin. He scored two measly runs as Nick Gonstianos is starting to heat up a little bit again. Al Bohm is really, really cooled off. Uh, Bryce Harper continues to do Bryce Harper things, collecting two singles. Uh, but uh, this Phillies team is really just unwatchable. As we pick up their scoring summary here in the bottom of the second inning, Dominic Smith hits a sacrifice fly out to center field. Eduardo Escobar comes around to score, and it's 1-0 New York here in the second. Uh, so Dominic Smith, I mean, some fundamental and the baseball continues to kill this Phillies team. Uh, and that's what the Mets do. I mean, we saw it in the first game in this ring game series. You have fundamental baseball. You know, it's something the Phillies don't do that often, right? Uh, so it's kind of just sad. Uh, one nothing Mets. So we pick it up here in the top of the fourth inning. JT Mucho, another guy, you know, starting to heat up a little bit. I think he's starting to see the baseball a little bit more. And that's one bright spot you could take out of last night's loss. Uh, as he singles on a line drive the other way to right field, which I love. Bryce Harper and Nick Castellanos come around to score. And the Phillies now take the lead now. Two to one ball game. So there you go. That was the Phillies' only lead of the night. Their only lead in this series. I mean, going the other way, right? Going the other way. And of course, this is on national television. You know, Fox Sports is going to be on national television tonight with uh, SNY.2, right? We know the other Mets announcers. Uh, am I right? Uh, but uh, JT Mucho, you know, on national division goes the other way. I mean, that ball was definitely hit hard. They pick it up here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Jeff McNeil. Uh, oh, my goodness gracious. He on a fly ball to right field. A three run shot also scores Lindor and Alonzo. And the Mets now retake the lead now four to three ball game. So there you go. I mean, we have this you know, nice, you know, two one lead now. Uh, I mean, maybe Zach Effort can calm down a little bit. Of course, it's only a one run lead, but uh, then he comes back and then gives up the. Uh, Three run shot to McNeil in the bottom of the inning. Uh, so that was McNeil's second home run of the season. It's just predictable. Right? We get a lead, and we just give it right up uh, as fast as we can, just as fast as we can. It's not something we haven't seen before. Uh, then we pick it up here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Francisco Lindor triples on a uh, short fly ball to left field. Lee Skormay and Stormy take him around to score. And the Mets now lead it 6-2. to two. So Lindor batting from the left-hand side of the batter's box. Going in, Zach Eflin uh, goes the other way, uh, which is pretty impressive. Uh, and uh, that scores two. Uh, so Zach Eflin, man, he was really, really struggling last night, uh, as he's mentioned before. Uh, and he's coming off of a start where he was absolutely dominant. So there you go again. The inconsistencies... Uh, continue for him. Um, so uh, the curveball, which is a pitch that really was uh, outstanding his last start, honestly, it wasn't nearly as good, you know, last night. Uh, you know, this wasn't really working. Uh, so, uh, you know, th this is a big problem for him. And we pick it up here in the same inning. Pete Alonso, he does it again. As he gets a sacrifice fly out to left field, Francisco Lindor scores easily from third, and the Mets now lead it 7-2. to two. Pete Alonso and the New York Mets continue uh, to, you know, play fundamentally sound baseball. Uh, you know, our background down back flies. It's just how you win games, which is how you win games. Um, you know, that's that's what you have to do. And then we pick it up here in the bottom of seventh inning. <sighs> Francisco Lindor singles on a line drive to right field. Luis Gourmet comes around to score. And the Mets now lead it 8-2. Uh, so Lindor collects another RBI right there. His third on the night. 
Uh, and uh, that would be your ball game. Eight to two is your final score. As I'm pretty much just wiped out uh, from this Phillies team. I'm just sick of it. I am just sick of this. Uh, so uh, another series loss. Another series loss to the Mets. Another loss to the Mets. Um, I'm just like I, I'm just done. I, I'm really just done with this Phillies team. It's only game 47, and I've already you know really just lost my patience with this Phillies team. Kyle Schwarber gets to start out of the leadoff spot. Uh, and collects a walk, not much out of him. He's really, really just, I, I don't know about him anymore. I really just don't. I mean, a 185 average. Uh, he will come out of this. We've seen this, you know, in the course of his career in 2020, uh, where he really was just in a horrible slump. He came back the next year, you know, 900 plus OPS, you know, an average above the 260 mark. So this is going to, I mean, he's going to be fine, but uh, man, this is a rough stretch for him. Our OPS now drops down to 711. Hasn't hit a run in like a minute. Uh, and hasn't even collected an RBI in like a minute either. Uh, so uh, he really, really needs to get it going. It seems like I've been saying that like every single video though. And, uh, you know, clearly he's not the answer out of the leadoff spot. Uh, I don't blame Joe for mixing it up a little bit though. Uh, Al Bum with a rough hitless performance last night. He is really, really struggling. Alvis down jobs at 281. And uh, one thing that I, you know, am a little bit annoyed about with Al Bum is he kind of seems to be a single hitter. I mean, a 706 OPS, which is really just eh. Uh, you know what I mean? He's just, he's kind of turned into a single setter. Um, you know, and, and, and the reason why not OPS is so low is because he's collecting the extra base hits. And honestly, he's not a huge walker either. Uh, so that, that's kind of a big problem for him. And uh, Bryce Harper, uh, two knocks last night, two singles, also scoring uh, one of the Phil's two runs. Uh, you know, pretty decent night last night for Harper. Now jumps up to 317. OPS now sits at 972. Uh, so uh, he's just on a deserted island all by himself. I mean, Mike Trout Jr. Mike Trout Jr. Uh, and of course, not anymore because Mike Trout's finally winning, but. Uh, wasted, 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 wasted talent. Uh, I, I just never seen anything like it in my life. There's pretty much no difference with Mike Trout being on the injuries and Harper being on the fills. I mean, honestly, I mean, it's just, it's the same thing. I mean, he can be continuing this to playoffs. Bryce Harper hasn't seen playoff baseball since 2017 when he was with Washington. And he got eliminated by the Chicago Cubs. Uh, so it's just, I feel so bad for Harper. I, I really, really do. You know, you got to know that he's so annoyed about all this. He's just not happy. You can just, you can just feel it. Nick Castellano. You know, also quick student last night also scores uh, the final run of the ball game for the Phils on that JT Mitchell uh, to RBI single. Now his down jumps up to 258. So it does look like he's starting to see the baseball a little bit. I mean, his first at bat, he flew out the center field out to Mark Hanna, uh, and, the, and the ball was pretty much right off the end of his bat. And I was, that was a nice swing. If he just would have sat back just a little bit, uh, and I definitely think that would have gone out for sure. Uh, and uh, Gene Segura with a rough with his performance last night. So there you go. And this is the night guy. And he's really, really cooled off. He is really, really cooled off. He had a red hot month of May. Average now drops to 276. Over his last seven, he's hitting 207. Over his last 15, he's hitting 237. So he is really, really cooled off. And uh, honestly, he hasn't really been the same since we got back from that uh, West Coast road trip. He had a great West Coast road trip, if you remember that. Uh, so the first half of May was definitely kinder to him than the second half of May. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's no question about that. Reese Hoskins, uh, hit with performance last night, but he was able to enjoy a walk. Uh, you know, I'm pretty much just over Reese Hoskins. I really, really am. I mean, I understand he has consistently mix in a walk, but uh, where are the home runs? Where are the extra base hits? Uh, and I've never really seen that. Uh, JT Rimuto, two knocks last night, the two RBI singer, Philly Sands immediate offensive player of the game. And Ramiro Castellanos and Harper really is the only guys that really wanted to show up and hit last night. Average now jumps up to 247. OPS now climbs to 698. So he's starting to hit the baseball more. He's starting to work his average back up there now. He's starting to heat up. So JT Muto is starting to enter a hot stretch. So that's, that's pretty promising to see. Uh, so keep up the good work, uh, JT Mucho, Dubrera with the uh, rough of his performance last night, uh, as it goes for a lot of these Phillies hitters. Uh, so uh, this is the thing with Herrera, right? I mean, you can come back, you, know, you can have a two or three at night, you know, come back the next night and uh, just look absolutely terrible. And finally, finally, I don't understand, maybe Joe Girardi did get the memo, Johan Camargo gets a start at short and collects a knock. Uh, so I expect him to see him back out there tonight. There's no excuse. No, no Bryson stop. No Bryson stop. Take a look at Zach. Eflin starts six innings, eight hits, eight, seven runs, all seven were earned, two logs, and four strikeouts. So a just a terrible start for Zach Eflin. Uh, so as I said before, I mean he comes off of an appearance where he you know collects twelve strikeouts and a career high. Uh, he's dealing and he comes back and allows seven earned and six. Um, so this is the problem with him. We've seen this over the course of his career. Uh, you know he's just so inconsistent, and it's something he needs to work on. Uh, he, it's something he needs to work on. He is so 
much potential to be so good. Uh, but uh, this is honestly probably his biggest problem, just trying to be more consistent. Um, so he gets Mack with the loss, now one and four on the year. James Dora with two-thirds innings, two hits, one run, run was earned, and he also allowed two walks. He ran out, climbs to 8-16. Gannon Bryan gave us a solid inning last night. Uh, a nice scores inning, collecting a strikeout, and uh, Serenity Dominguez also came in there in the bottom of the eighth inning and collected the final out. So it was nice to see Connor Bryan, and that's one nice thing we could see. The VO looks like it's kind of climbing back up again like it was at the beginning of last year. Uh, the VO really was just down in spring training. Uh, that's part of the reason why he was not in the big league club right down in AAA. Uh, so that, that's a, that was a big reason why... Uh, so I am tired of losing to this Mets team. Uh, let me say it again. I am tired of losing to this Mets team. I'm tired of losing, period. But I'm really, really tired of losing to this Mets team. I'm tired of the series losses. I'm just sick of it. It's not even competitive. It's just like, I understand the first game was, but uh, this isn't even fun to watch, man. I mean, this is just like, this is abysmal. It really is. Washington Nationals and Colorado Rockies playing in a doubleheader. Uh, the uh, Washington Nationals won uh, the first game 13-7. Then they lost the second game 3-2. Uh, to two. Byron Mullins going against Atlanta Braves as they uh, defeat the Braves by a fun score of 4-1. Uh, so here's your little NL East uh, divisional update. I do think the Braves will probably heat up at some point. I mean, the Mets, I mean, they're just running away with this division. Uh, they are just running away with this division and it's just so sad nine and a half gap between the Phillies and the Mets uh, in the NL East and uh, just it's just terrible eight and a half gap between the Braves uh, and the New York Mets in this division uh, and uh, the Nationals find themselves just 14 games back <laughs> so uh, I don't even know anymore ladies and gentlemen I'm tired of defending this team not that I really defended it much all year there's just so much wrong with this team and I also understand that George Rodney's not been the best manager this year but you can't put this all on his shoulders this is not all his fault. Uh, and this, the, the Phillies' problems extend far beyond Joe Girardi. Uh, clearly, uh, clearly, uh, he's just a manager. He doesn't go out there and play the game. So I don't blame this loss on Joe Girardi last night. Not at all. Uh, you know, I blame this on our offense is not hitting. Just not hitting. And also, I blame this on Zach Eflin uh, for coming back out after he has a terrific start and just following it up with this. Uh, so typical. And also, I feel like whenever we're in New York, whenever we're on national television, it really, really rattles us. We are awful on national television. We are just. Terrible on national television. Uh, so we really need to make sure we're more better with that. So uh, we are 0-2 in Sunday Night Baseball this year. And we're honestly just terrible on Sunday Night Baseball, you know, period. Uh, we're very rarely do we ever win on Sunday Night Baseball. Uh, and for whatever reason, as I was just talking about. So I'm not liking our chances tonight at all. It looks like we're probably going to get swept. And, oh, boy, I just, I just can't stand it. 7-8 uh, the first pitch tonight. Uh, exactly. 3-3, 360 array. You're going against Chris Bassett, 4-2 with a 3 9 one ERA. Uh, so probably going to get swept. I mean, who knows? Thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please share and engage bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Check out the social media link, discussion section at Philly's Hanson Media, Instagram, Instagram. Follow me on Twitter at Piazza Media, Car text 267-225-3292. Email me, Philly's Hanson Media at gmail.com. So we are Bassett tonight, 7-8 on Sunday Night Baseball. ESPN, get ready for the SOY. Uh, point two. So guys, thanks for watching. I'm moving out to Let's go, folks. And I'll see you guys soon.